Hello and welcome to our training. My name is Sophie and I will lead you through the training today. Today we are working on the topic of templates. This training consists of several parts. In the first two videos we will look at the basics of template creation. The first video is about the basics of templates and we will create a background. In the second video, we will create a layout. After that, there are specific videos on the topics of overlays, animations, adapting existing templates and CSS in Presono. So let's start with the basics. Let's briefly review the basic principle of Presono. Presono is based on the so-called single source principle. This means that each content exists only once, but can be reused as often as desired. Each element, whether template, slide or media file, exists only once. If the element is used, it is only a link and can therefore be easily updated. If a slide is updated, it is automatically updated in all presentations where it's used. The same applies to images, videos and templates. All elements are subject to central management. So if I change something in the template, these changes are applied everywhere from the slide to the presentation to the shared link. But what is a template? Presentations consist of slides, which consists of two templates. We distinguish between layout and background templates. So each slide consists of a background and a layout. Logos, background color or background images are placed on a background template. A layout, on the other hand, defines which areas there are, where they are located, with which content they may be filled, which permissions and restrictions they have for the respective content and what the content will look like, especially with text, fonts, colors, spacing and animations. Now let's look at how to create template sets. In the content structure, the templates are grouped into template sets to simplify the administration. In this way, a whole set of templates can be shared with a user group, for example. To create a new template set, we click on the New button and select Create New Template Set. Now we can choose a name for our set as well as a workspace and categories. We click on Save afterwards. I can also give the set a preview image so that it can be recognized in the content structure or when creating a slide. On the pencil icon, I can also rename or move it to another workspace at any time. Each template set must contain at least one background and one layout in order to create a slide with it. So first I will create a new background, either via the plus or the new button up here. This brings me to the editor. Here I have the possibility to draw a section with the design section tool here in the upper right corner. With the selection tool, on the other hand, I can click, zoom in, zoom out, move or adjust the sections. Below that, on the right hand side, I can adjust the view. Show and hide the grid lines, define whether the areas should adhere to the grid or not, set the grid itself or show the ruler. With this button here, I can display the selected area at the very front for easier editing. I can also adjust the zoom, fit the view and switch between pixels and percentages. A slide in Presono has always the ratio 16 to 9, 
So if I use a multiple of that for the grid, I get a square grid. Below the tools and the view settings, there are the sections. Here we find the layout section, which is locked. This is the placeholder where the layout will be placed later in the slide creation. The section I have just created lies underneath it. This means that it will later be below the layout and therefore behind the contents. But if I want the section to be above the layout, for example, because I want a menu button or place a logo above the content, I click on the section and drag it all the way to the top. Sections like this should always be at the very front because otherwise the element would maybe no longer be visible or clickable. Now a stencil section hint appears. I place the section above it and it then automatically gets a scissor icon, which means that this section is now placed above the layout. I can either adjust the ranges manually or set the exact values at the top left of my section. With the preferences to the right of the input field, I can then center my area or align it differently. To the right, I can choose a different color or even a background image. Then I can set a frame or create a round area. The next icon to the right can be used to animate the area. Presono offers several effects to choose from. When I move the mouse over the animations, I get a preview of the respective effect. There are input animations and those to attract attention. These are suitable for buttons, for example, if I want to encourage visitors to click it, to click it at a trade fair. When an effect is selected, the duration of the effect and the delay can be set at the bottom. I can also set a link to this area. Clicking at the icon, I see the different options. So during the presentation, I can jump back to the start slide or one slide back or forward by clicking on this area. Also, it can link to any slide, presentation or overlay. It can also link to a language, so a language switcher can be built into all slides that use that background template. We'll get to the close icon later in that training. We'll now link to the first page so we can get a home button. When I'm done with my background template, I can preview it by clicking here. At the end, I will save my background template and set a title. The arrow in the upper left corner leads back to the template set. Here you can see my new background. In the next video, we will look at how to create a layout to go with our background.